Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, April 10th, 2020. And today we're going to be going through an in-depth analysis as to why Bernie Sanders lost the 2020 Democratic nomination. And essentially this will be uh, brought down to seven main reasons as to why Bernie Sanders lost the nomination, though there were a number of other things that could have impact the race and did impact the race. They definitely were not as, as substantial as the, I guess, issues that I'm going to be uh, showing you guys right now. So the first thing that we need to talk about is the fact that the majority of the Democratic Party still identifies under either centrist or conservative. Now, it's a narrow majority at this point, a 51 to 47 percent. But regardless, uh, it still is uh, the overall majority of the Democratic Party. Three percent identify as very conservative. Eleven percent is conservative and 38 percent is moderate. It's so actually 52 um, to 47. Uh, but still. For the, I guess, liberal or progressive side, as the other term for liberal is just intertwined with um, progressive, 47% in the net. So 32% identify as liberal and 15% identify as very liberal. Now take that 14% of the conservative block and the 38% of the moderate block and give them to Joe Biden. Now, unfortunately for Bernie Sanders, I guess that 52% of that voting bloc was never going to vote for him. Realistically, they wanted a candidate like Hillary Clinton to run again in 2020. They didn't move over to the progressive side. While America may be for ideas such as free college and Medicare for all, the Democratic Party is not fully on board with the platform that Bernie Sanders gave for the 2020 election. The main purpose was to kick out Donald Trump, who is currently the president, and in 2016, that was not the main purpose. A lot of things have changed since then, though we did see a very similar primary and a lot of similar primary tactics from both the Sanders and Biden campaigns, referring Joe Biden's campaign to the Hillary Clinton campaign. Now, these are the numbers from Pew Research, and it's just one of the main reasons as to why uh, Bernie Sanders did not gain in any voters. In fact, based off the 2016 numbers, which you can see right here, liberals only gained 2% more within the Democratic Party. That's not enough to overcome hundreds of delegates that went for Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. Now, moving on to, I guess, my second point, young people just don't vote. These are the Super Tuesday uh, youth turnout numbers, and to be completely honest, they're horrible. I mean, the highest turnout in any state was in the state of Minnesota with 19% youth turnout. When young people make up a third of the electorate and only 19% are turning out in primaries, that's not going to do well for the candidate that's supposed to be driving out youth turnout, i.e. Bernie Sanders. And Joe Biden did win the state of Minnesota despite young voters choosing, uh, I guess, Bernie Sanders 65% to 17%. It also rivaled turnout in Massachusetts, which also went to Joe Biden. Um, but it is just a very interesting uh, number that it's such a low number, yet it is the highest youth turnout on Super Tuesday. And Bernie Sanders was supposed to bring in a huge new number of younger voters into the electorate. That is somewhere that he did fail this election season. Despite him having millions of Twitter followers and an active social media following, people can retweet and like things all they want, but if they don't vote, it doesn't matter for anything. Older people vote. Young people don't vote. And whether or not that's an issue to be tackled now or later, the primary is already over. And young voters, if they wanted Bernie Sanders, they blew it for themselves. Now, moving on to my next point, essentially, mainly white and Latino voters were the ones that supported Bernie Sanders, more so white voters over Latino voters. But if you take a look at this primary map and where it was already, I guess, on the way to go, Bernie Sanders just didn't have voters in predominantly African-American areas, and he just had the support up with uh, white voters. If you take a look at the 2016 map as well, Bernie Sanders won in predominantly white states. A lot of these gray states, Bernie Sanders did win in 2016. Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota, uh, not South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas. These are states that I guess are stereotyped as predominantly white states, and they are based off demographic numbers, along with the Democratic voting blocks there as well. But that's not to say Bernie Sanders didn't win Latino voters. He won them in Nevada. He won them in California. He won them in Colorado. And they do make up a pretty substantial uh, voting block in those states. But unfortunately for him, they didn't make enough, uh, I guess, of a portion of the Democratic primary vote. That really comes down to winning white and African-American voters. And yes, Bernie Sanders did have white voters, but Joe Biden did phenomenally better than Hillary Clinton in winning over white voters uh, compared to uh, her 2016 bid. 
Now, I guess the next issue uh, would be the fact that Biden won with older voters who do vote. And this goes back to my point that young voters don't vote. Young voters were the only ones who approved of, I guess, voted more so in favor of Bernie Sanders than Joe Biden. Every other voting bloc voted for Joe Biden over Bernie Sanders. The most recent and last Democratic primary poll to be released from CNN uh, with Joe Biden, of course, in the lead. Bernie Sanders only won over the age block of 18 to 49. Now, I'm sure he definitely won 18 to 28 or a voting block similar to those uh, age ranges by an overwhelming margin. But once you start to dabble into the older voters, when you take a look at ages 45 plus, Biden wins by 71 percent and ages 65 plus by 78 percent. And these voters turn out way more than young voters. While they may not be in-person voting, you can almost guarantee that a lot of these people do have the time on their hands to fill out an absentee ballot, send their ballot in by mail, or find the means necessary to get to that polling station. Now, voting is not a national holiday, and that is an issue to be discussed in an entirely different video. There are a number of constraints as to why younger and older people both cannot vote in the numbers that they should be voting. Uh, whether they had work that day or they just didn't have the access to transportation is a completely other issue. And unfortunately for the Bernie Sanders campaign, the older voters were the ones who actually turned out this primary season, as they did in 2016. A lot of the same mistakes were made by the Bernie campaign that uh, were not revisited after the 2016 campaign, most notably support amongst African American voters. Now the next issue is electability. This is the same issue used by the Clinton camp in 2016, except back then the numbers didn't back it up. Bernie Sanders consistently outperformed Hillary Clinton in 2016 general election and state-by-state -state polls. And that's just not the case this time around. On your screen is the JHK forecast for uh, the average of the polling data between uh, Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump, and now I guess Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Uh, based off the polling data, Joe Biden has a 77% chance of winning the presidency, and Bernie Sanders has a 59.2% chance losing notable states such as Wisconsin, Ohio, Georgia, and Florida, compared to Joe Biden, which, according to polling data, he would carry Wisconsin, he would carry Ohio, and he would carry the state of Florida and Arizona, which is a state um, that hasn't gone to a Democrat since Bill Clinton. And it's not just there. If you take a look at the real clear politics averages yourself and take a look at where uh, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden are both polled in these state races, Biden outperforms uh, Bernie Sanders in every single state that I'm about to list, including the national average, which Biden outperforms Bernie Sanders by 1.7%. In the state of Wisconsin, by 0.7%. In Florida, by 4.7%. In Pennsylvania, by a percentage. In North Carolina, by 2.7%. In Arizona, by 5.2%. In Minnesota, by 3%. And in Georgia, by 3%. In the 2016 race, a lot of races came down to less than 1%, most notably Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And when you have a candidate who is narrowly but surely outperforming the other candidate, Democrats are a lot more inclined to vote for the candidate they truly believe is more electable. Of those states I mentioned, they total up to 111 total electoral votes. 270 are needed, and I mean... The race was insanely close in 2016. Hillary Clinton lost by 38 electoral votes. If any type of increase based off the 2016 numbers for the Democrats uh, happens in 2020, they will almost all but surely win the presidency. They won Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan by less than 1%. Uh, if they increase there, which I'm sure that these Democrats wanted to not take a bet with Bernie Sanders and wanted to go with the candidate that, based off the data, has better a better chance at the presidency, um, I mean, I guess it just comes down to the issue of electability for that. And the next thing I guess you could say is the fact that uh, Joe Biden is not Hillary Clinton by any means. Let's take a look at where she was averaging based off today, April 10th in 2016 in terms of approval data. On April 10th, 2016, Hillary Clinton had a 32% approval rating according to the NBC News poll, a 56% disapproval rating an overall net of negative 24. This was the 2016 Democratic candidate. She was vastly unpopular, even amongst Democrats. Independents didn't want her. Republicans surely didn't want her. 
and Democrats were a little bit complacent and decided to stick with her in the 2016 race. They were the party in power, so they just wanted to continue Obama's legacy. Now it comes down to kicking out Donald Trump and finding a candidate that was more popular amongst the American people than Hillary Clinton was. And that candidate is Joe Biden. With an overall net of a tie with a 45% unfavorability rating and a 45% approval rating, it is vastly different than what the numbers were for Hillary Clinton four years ago. And that's what made all the difference this primary season as well. Joe Biden isn't Hillary Clinton. That support that a lot of the mainstream media thought was for Bernie Sanders was a lot actually just anti-Clinton uh, support for Bernie Sanders. For example, West Virginia. If you take a look at the 2016 exit polling data from CNN, more of those Democratic primary voters wanted a more conservative president than President Barack Obama. Genuinely, do you really believe that they thought Bernie Sanders was more conservative than Barack Obama? I don't think anyone that has a basic idea of what Bernie Sanders stands for could even say that. But a lot of those voters voted against Hillary Clinton purely because she was a Clinton and they didn't like her personality. A lot of people really like Joe Biden's personality, especially amongst Democrats. And my final, I guess, seventh reason is the fact that we are seeing practically a 2016 repeat. This is the 2016 Democratic primary map based off of just the voting data, not pledge delegates because at the convention, uh, Bernie Sanders allocated all of the delegates after Vermont to vote for Hillary Clinton. So when you take a look at this map, there are key areas that uh, Bernie Sanders did well in and Hillary Clinton did well in. When you take a look at the Sun Belt, Hillary Clinton won over Latino voters. She won over uh, black voters. But Bernie Sanders did well amongst white voters in states that Donald Trump won. Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Indiana, West Virginia, a number of other solidly conservative states. And Hillary Clinton, of course, won in states that also Donald Trump won in. Almost every single state in the South besides Virginia. And when you take a look at the 2020 map, we're starting to see an exact copy of what we saw uh, in 2016. If you take a look, the South dominates for uh, Joe Biden, I guess the Hillary Clinton candidate of the time being. But we haven't had time for this Democratic primary to pan out, so let's go ahead and take a look at the crossovers. On your screen right now are states that, uh, in dark blue, went for both Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. In light blue, went for Bernie Sanders in 2016 and Joe Biden in 2020. And then the states in light green are states that went for Hillary Clinton in 2016 and Bernie Sanders in 2020. And then the solid green are states that voted for uh, Bernie Sanders both times around. As you can see, it looks like Joe Biden is winning in areas that Hillary Clinton couldn't before. Now, if you take a look at the area, it's possible Biden does not have as much Latino support as Hillary Clinton did, but it is clear that Joe Biden does have as much support amongst African-American voters and more support amongst white voters, voters that are crucial to the general election. When you take a look at California and you take a look at Nevada, those are two states that the Democrats are not going to lose, regardless of who the primary winner was going to be. Sure, Bernie Sanders could have had a better chance at Iowa, but that six electoral votes is not going to make much of a difference when Biden is picking up Michigan and he's locking down Minnesota. And if he continues the trend, we'll pick up Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, all but surely uh, giving the Democrats the presidency. In fact, if you take a look at the 538 data and where they actually project the rest of these races to go, Joe Biden picks up 17 states that Bernie Sanders won in 2016. Bernie Sanders won a total of three states that Hillary Clinton won in 2016. So clearly, if you take a look at these numbers, Joe Biden did something way different in terms of winning over voters that previously were, I guess, identified as Bernie Sanders supporters. Whether it was anti-Clinton rhetoric or an electability issue, there were a whole number of things that were detrimental to Bernie Sanders' campaign and overall uh, denied him for a second bid at the White House. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.